I don't have the best lawn in the world. It gets a fair bit of destruction from the dogs, a little shade, and yes, I admit it, a lack of attention required to make it a masterpiece. But the upside to working on green fingers is that I got to learn about Village Green. And once I found out how tough it was, that it could handle all the wear and tear of the dogs, plus the negligence that I give, I knew I had to have it. Darren and Jason were over yesterday preparing the site and removed all of my sandy lawn in preparation for my new turf. Once the soil has been prepared with amendments that ensure moisture is held around the roots, it's time to get down and dirty and roll it out. Village Green needs less water than most fine leaf grasses, which is important for a guy who got in trouble for watering on the wrong day last year. It also needs less fertiliser than other lawn varieties due to its massive root system, which is also the reason it handles heavy traffic so well. Apparently not a butter knife, it's supposed to just point and shoot. Ben, it's like a bit of a jigsaw puzzle. It is a bit of a jigsaw puzzle, but we're almost done. So if you just get that last bit of header in there, yep. I'll roll the rest of it out. Yep. Get it done. Let's do it. It's a seedless turf, meaning it won't invade your garden bed or irritate people with allergies and problems like hay fever. I want to share something with you I've learned about Village Green. The tight, dense cover of the turf smothers weeds, which minimises the need for hand weeding or the use of chemicals, which makes this lawn ideal for kids or pets. The density enables it to recover from the toughest of use and still maintain its deep green colour. Then it's a case of running the compactor over the top, push the roots into the sand and get all air pockets out, ensuring you don't end up with dry patches on the first hot day. That's it. It's that easy. How good does it look? For more information on this amazing turf, check out our website.